In this video we will check if a 3D printer can print at 400 mm per second and if so, what is the print quality? And if everything works well, then how can such a monster help me with Iron Man suit and body parts for our projects? What's up everybody, long time no see, so a few words about our progress for a better understanding of the context of this video. In previous episodes we have learned how to use simple FDM printers to facilitate the production of metal parts. Remember, we print a thick walled plastic helmet and use it as a template for cutting, bending and welding a full metal helmet. The process is quite complex and in fact all metal helmet itself is too heavy for everyday use. Then we learned 3D printing, composite technology and electroplating. With the help of the same FDM 3D printers we now print accurate and single layer matrices of parts. From the inside we reinforce them with carbon fiber, kevlar or fiberglass to give them desired strength. And from the outside we smooth the part, prime them and cover with the first with copper and then with nickel and chromium for wear resistance, hardness and awesomeness. Sure, such a process is also quite complex, but in the end we achieve sufficient strength with much more lower weight of the part. And also important, uh, the work with metal requires really high skills and expensive equipment. But the manufacture of composite parts is divided into several elementary steps, therefore this technology really can be mastered by anyone who will watch basics of composites playlist careful enough. Even I don't believe that it's still free, so please use it for your projects. So now we have full DIY technology that can be used at home or garage and we can make not only Iron Man suit but also any light body parts for manufacture and tuning of motorcycles, cars, aircraft and other parts for your projects. You're welcome! As you can see to create the exact geometry of parts regardless of further technology we use 3D modeling and 3D printing. While I was fitting with composites and electroplating last two years I realized that I need two things and the first is Money! First I need you boop the like button and subscribe to my channel right now. And the second, despite three printers, sometimes I still do not have enough print speed, because I really want to quickly print technical parts, process, correct, reprint and so all this process fit in one day. Like I said, I already have three FDM printers, Ender 3, Ender 5 and CR10 from Creality. I love them, they work great and I use them every day for two years. I change only the plastic clamps on the third Ender to the metal one. And if you distribute the printing task for three printers, then in one day they print a great volume. But for rapid prototyping I would like to get parts even faster. Ideally like this. You wake up at 6 in the morning, model the part, put it on a print, go to the workout, return and the part is already printed. In short, I have checked the fastest FDM printers for this year with sufficient print area for the large body parts and I found this monster, FL Sun V400 and 400 in the name, that the speed at which it should print against my 80 mm per second. As you understand, when I scroll down to the picture of <laughs> Iron Man helmet, the printer had already been chosen. Of course, while the printer was coming from China I couldn't work quietly and started watching YouTube videos about it, but that was only half the trouble. I even found a local chat of the owners of this printer in Telegram and then I was completely nailed. Images of lines of code and disassembled cases and uh, the words about printer metal guide roads are not replaceable and the fan is kind of too noisy and power supply is cheap and carbon roads fiber on the roads is laminated at the wrong angle and in general Delta kinematics work not so good as classical th uh, three-line kinematics like my printers. But most importantly many people wrote that in fact V400 doesn't produce good print quality at the declared speed of 400 mm per second. Naturally after all of this you get upset when you order a printer of 850 bucks and then you read that it doesn't print at all. But most of all I was stunned in the pickup point when I as usual came on electric unicycle, you know, because I still have no car, and saw the dimensions and weight of the box. Ok, my bad. When choosing printer dimensions I looked at the maximum print high, which is uh, quite uh, the same as Creality CR10, but I forgot that this is delta, that is the high of the arms is added to the print high. Finally I came from the pickup point with very mixed feeling. I didn't show the full unpacking completely, also for the first time in my life I really wanted to do this. 
The quality of the packaging is really cool. Each part separated from other with theme pad, book with pictures, tools for assembly and work, spare parts, everything that we love. Despite the fact that this is the first printer, for assembly of which I needed to climb on the stool, this wardrobe assembled faster than the Ender 3. In fact, all we need is to screw three stands to the lid and the bottom, attach the print head to the carbon fiber rods and connect the wires to the computer. And yes, instead of a standard display, V400 comes with a small Linux computer, which connects off to your computer wireless with all the convenience for geeks who likes to mess around in the code and reconfigure each print option for themselves. To be honest, I don't belong to such guys, so it's important for me so that the things start working normally immediately after assembly. Also, when you're done with building and want to start a test print, you will find a detailed video assembly instructions on the flash drive. Just know in advance that it is there. I will not list all the dimensions of this monster there on the website, I just want to give you an idea of how much living space you need to occupy. Height over stand is 955 mm. Half with the spool is 1 meter and 20 centimeters. Dimensions by triangle base is half a meter. By the way, due to the triangular shape of the base, V400 fits quite compactly in the corner and it in this form doesn't take up much space. More benefits that I immediately check out automatic table calibration, rather it's calibration of the printing head, which occurs with the help of a special nozzle that comes with the kit. And completely fixed table that doesn't even move along the z-axis. Remember in previous videos I said that this is a huge advantage when printing large thin wall parts, especially at high speed. If the table has to move back and forth, then due to vibrations the quality of the part on the upper layers becomes worse and sometimes because of this the part cracks off the table. There is also filament detection sensor, print LED, illumination directly on the head, carbon rods and other little things that make printing more comfortable and enjoyable. After the assembly is completed, we immediately proceed to printing. The thing I tried for the first time was online printing. The printer connects to the computer by IP address and a window with all the settings and print tasks and print history opens in the browser without additional software. So we cut the model in the slicer and send it to print with just two clicks without getting up from the computer, while remembering how sending to print without a network usually looks like. By connecting the webcam to the printer computer, the process can be monitored remotely. This is especially convenient if your 3D printer farm is located somewhere in the basement or in a separate room so as not to breathe in plastic, especially if you print with ABS and your living room with the computer is another floor. Also, with the help of remote monitor and control, you can start printing, leave and go out and at any time monitor the operation of the printer and stop printing if something suddenly goes wrong. And my first print was just terrible quality. And my second print was even worse. I tried to slow down the speed, type other settings, take other models, check the belts, printed more and more, but the quality got worse and worse. I remind you, this is my fourth printer, so I do know how to print and adjust printers, but with such print quality, even a thick layer filler will not help because here the defects are not only on the edges and complex geometry, but over the entire surface. Of course I started to panic and think that all these guys were right. I couldn't understand what was the matter for a whole week. I flooded the manufacturer with the letters. By the way, the manufacturer answered instantly and really helped. I swear, I could stretch the intrigue into a couple of videos, but I wanna save your nerves. In short, the whole thing turned out to be with a slicer, with which I have been working for the third year. A slicer is a program that takes a 3D model, cut it into layers and translate it in a set of commands to the printer, understanding G-code. I knew that different versions of the same slicer could slice uh, the same model slightly different. But for some strange reason, Cura version 5.3 sliced model as a ground beef. And all that you see right now is not a problem of a printer, but a problem of a slicer. And the next day after I realized this, on July 5th, Cura 5.4 was released and life began to improve. In all the following tests, after the slicer has worked correctly, I fundamentally didn't slow down the speed declared and printed all the models at 400 mm per second because, <laughs> you know, it is mentioned in the printer's name. 
Naturally, this doesn't mean that the hot end is constantly moving at the speed. 400 mm per second is the speed of uh, free motion, so I indicated the real speeds, accelerations and total printing time with subtitles. As for me, it's pretty impressive. On all these frames you can check the radio of speed and print quality of FLSAN V400 at a declared speed of 400 mm per second. That is, at such speed with such quality the printer prints right out of the box without additional settings, program tuning or hardware upgrades. Especially impressive look the competition of Ender 3 and V400 at their maximum speed. Also, this printer, unlike all my previous ones, has direct type extruder. That is, the mechanism for feeding plastic is mounted directly into the high-speed head as close as possible to the hot end. That allows you to print not only with the hot plastic, but also with flexes like TPU. Therefore, in addition to hot body parts, this printer can print O-rings, seals, anthers and gaskets for the long-suffering suspension of my electric unicycle and other elastic parts for sale within a few hours, including modeling time. Therefore, now you don't need to wait a month of a parcel from China if you have only one unique oil seal that is not on sale. After making sure that the printer works at the advertised speed and excellent quality, I moved on to what I ordered this printed for – prototyping large body parts at high speed. Using V400 I reprinted the chest plate in the right scale in 20 hours, and after a long video fitting of 3D models and bad scale prints, I was finally able to try it on leaf. Although everything was great in Blender, but only after a leaf fitting there is an understanding of how it will be felt in dynamics. It becomes clear what is convenient and what is inconvenient, in which particular places the path restricts movement, how much space is left for the exosuit and other stuffing of the shell. After fitting the details in full scale, it becomes clear exactly where it will be needed, trim the edges where to slightly change the geometry of the elements and where to remodel the details altogether. It may even be necessary to completely remodel the costume, starting with a scale plasticine model to maintain mobility and leave enough space for stuffing. So, high-speed printing really speeds up the prototyping of parts and allows you to quickly and accurately bring to the real world everything that you can imagine and 3D model. Now I can model, scale, print, try on and refine in one day large body parts for Iron Man suit and other projects. Pay attention at the surface quality of the large parts printed at 400 mm per second. Yes, at this speed an echo effect may appear and slight print defects close at the edges, but they are all corrected with only one coat of primer and one shot sanding approach. Let's summarize. Main point. Can V400 print as fast as its name suggests? Sure, it can. The print quality even on the large parts when the printer accelerates to the maximum, as you can see, remains excellent. If your task requires maximum detail and high quality of the outer layer and subsequent processing, smoothing and painting are not provided, for example for printing decorative items, minifigures and furniture, then the speed can be reduced to 300 mm per second and separately adjust the acceptable printing speed of the outer layer. Also, given that the printer's computer runs on Linux, that is on open source code that the most crazy techno geeks will be able to configure every parameter for perfecting printing at the speeds for specific models. I love technique, but I'm definitely not the kind of person who, after assembling the printer, will to rummage through the brains of the machine for weeks and calibrate hundreds of millimeters and milliseconds of acceleration. So, I am just glad that this machine start working well right after the unpacking without additional drumming, especially if you don't screw up with slicer. In any case, it is thanks to the Delta Kinematics and the wild speeds of the head movement Printing will be many times faster than other printers. By the way, the large weight of the print frame at such speeds is an advantage and not a disadvantage, as the heavy base minimizes vibration. Now about the price. I don't understand why in some reviews on YouTube the V400 is mentioned as a budget printer. In my understanding, the budget printer is Ender 3 <laughs> for $170, including taxes, shipping and tips for delivery boy but we don't expect 400 mm per second performance from a budget printer. 
At the time of my order V400 was priced at $850 and as for me this is a good price because I initially didn't treat it as a budget one. For me this is a high performance machine that now works in my workshop every day. Uh, by the way if we compare a 3D printer with other machine tools here is an $850 printer that can print just about you know, anything that you want uh, very quickly. And for example, my drilling machine from Jet Tools for $630 for its price, all it can do is drill holes straight <laughs> through metal and that's it. But there are no complaints about the price and the quality. Just because professional equipment that works every day is quite expensive. In short, <laughs> my conclusion. I recommend this printer for those who has already decided what exactly he wants to print and wants to do this quickly. In this case you get a professional machine for rapid prototyping and printing parts for sale. And if you are just starting to be interested in the topic of 3D printing, it is unlikely that your first purchase will be 20 kilos cabinet for 800. At that moment I have been using V400 daily for a month and now I am completely satisfied with the speed and quality of printing. Uh, there will be updates in the next video, so don't forget to subscribe, so you don't miss out, perhaps I break something. Don't forget to subscribe to my new Alex Lab channel, which is Alex Lab Research, because all the boring technical videos are now out there. <laughs> By the way, this video could have been released there. Well, evaluate yourself the degree of stuffiness of this video in the comments. Also, remember that you can become a member of Alex Lab channel and get access to all my blueprints and DIY guides. Links to all models in the description, link to the playlist basics of composites in the description. Good luck with your own projects. Bye.